Uh, welcome. I am going to get started in just a sec um, once a few people get to join, but um, thanks for joining me. Hopefully we can do this every Sunday. Uh, we might have a few different teachers doing it just to get some different flavors in here. Um, I wish I could see those of you that have joined me. Maybe we should do this by Zoom or something so that I can see everyone. Uh, it's really fun throwing with other people. So if you took a wheel home and you want to set up some kind of video throwing party, I am down. Just let us know. We can help organize that. Um, oh, all right. I have... Uh, my phone here just in case um, I need it, but I won't be looking at it. Um, you can join the chat on the right side of the screen. Yeah, on the right side of the screen is the chat if you're watching on a laptop. Um, and if you are watching on mobile, you can put comments in the bottom. Um, and hmm, it seems like I'm getting an echo on the audio. Maybe. Let me just see what I can do about that. Is that better? Um, all right, well, hopefully you all can hear me well enough and we'll get started. Um, so you'll need to have about a pound and a half of clay um, and it should be wedged. But if you are kind of new to this, or maybe you don't remember how to wedge, we can get away without doing it um, uh, for the small amounts of clay. So I'm gonna show you, I just got this clay straight out of the bag. Um, I cut it in a uh, square. I know it's a little messy. Um, and I'm just going to, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> This is live. Uh, I'm gonna hit the pat, pat the corners and hit them with the palm of my hand. Um, and I'm gonna just hit this into a bowl shape. B A L L, not B O W L. Um, just to kind of give us a bit of a head start once we once we start um, spinning it on the wheel. You need to hit it kind of hard. Um, so that's that. So if you aren't sure how to wedge yet, um, we're going to create a wedging tutorial for you. Um, but in the meantime, you can join in just by doing that technique on a small piece of clay, um, especially if it's just fresh out of the bag. If it were a recycled piece or maybe a piece that you've been working on a little bit, um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. We want to make sure that the clay is nice and stable um, and um, the same moistness throughout. Oh, and I forgot to say that if you're joining on the chat, um, Gina, who taught our hand building tutorial that you can um, see on our YouTube channel, she will be answering the questions since I will have my hands in clay. So um, if there's anything that she can't answer, she'll send me a text. Um, and I'll try to answer it kind of in real time as I'm throwing. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is turn our wheel on. So the control panel is on the right side, in case you don't know. It's the beginner class, so I'm just going to teach it how I would usually teach it in the studio <laughs> because that's, you know, how I remember to teach it. So on the right side is the control panel, and you're going to switch the pedal, switch the um, switch up. And when you hit the pedal, you sh your wheel should turn counterclockwise or anti-clockwise if you're watching from the United States. Um, okay, so we've got this, we've got our wedged clay and I'm gonna place it with the wide flat part down. So it's kind of in a gumdrop shape. Um, and I'm gonna press down with my hands all the way around it just to kind of seal it in at the base there. So I'm just 
going to spin the wheel a little bit with my hands and just press it down. And then I'm going to take my index finger of my right hand and I'll point it towards the camera so you can see. Um, I'm just going to press down all the way around the base so that I can create a really nice even seal all the way around. Um, the purpose of doing this is to try to prevent any water from getting underneath. And then I'm going to keep my finger there and give it a nice spin so you can see. I'm going to try to point some of my um, steps to the camera. Um, as I remember, uh, so that I can show you what I'm doing. Um, and then we'll do another video. There's also one that's on our channel um, that's basically a big, really basic throwing class, um, which you can see uh, all the steps. You can you can see like different points of view, so you can see inside the ball as it's being thrown. Now's a good time to take a sip of your coffee. But again, I get messy now. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is as we spin the wheel, we can see that the clay is moving. It's kind of wobbling like this. Um, and we want to get it to the point where it's really still. Um, so you, you, know, you always can't see it moving when you're spinning the wheel uh, before we start to throw, before we start to open it up and make it into a bowl. So we're going to put some water on. This water is really cold because I left it out overnight. Ew. So maybe in the future I'll put some boiling water in there to warm it up, but it's what we have right now. So um, I'm going to make this shape with my hands. So my right hand is on the bottom of my left finger. So my right hand like this, my left hand goes on top, um, kind of in the crease of my knuckles, and, then, and my left fingers are going to rest on top. And then this whole shape is going to go on the wheel like so. So the heels of my hands are at about 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock on the wheel. And my fingers are kind of just resting lightly. So I'm not going to use much pressure from my fingers. Most of the pressure is going to come from this, this part of my hand. I'm going to throw the, some water on and my hands go on. I'm just going to squeeze gently to make the clay get a bit taller. And this is called coning up. Um, so this is the first step in the process of centering. So centering is um, the overall step and the steps within centering are called coding up and coding down. Um, so now that we've gone up, um, and I can look at my wheel and I can see there's um, my base, while this is getting started to get centered, my base is still really wobbly. I'm going to take my right thumb and I'm just going to scrape away some of that really low down play. Um, also, I just realized that if you're joining us, you probably can't join the chat either because you have play in your hands. So <laughs> if you have any questions after um, or if you have a buddy or a roommate or a partner with you that can type the questions then I need to call them in. Um, all right, so now that we've gone up, we need to go back down. So we're gonna go back down to get to about that same shape that we started with, only a little neater, hopefully. So we're gonna use this part of our hand. And this step's kind of hard. Um, it's the step that usually, if I was in class, I would go, I'd be able to go around and kind of help with the pressure. So be patient with yourself. Um, it's, it's not super intuitive, this next step, um, but once you get used to the pressure and the feel of it, you'll, it'll click. Um, but just uh, watch me do it and then we can all try it together. Um, I am going to put a little more water on. So the whole time that I'm working with it, I'm just adding water, adding water, adding water. Um, I want it to always be nice and shiny so that if my fingers are touching it, it's super slippery. It's not um, ever sticky. So... If it gets sticky, then it might come off the wheel or it might twist in a weird way and that might ca cause cracking later. So I always want it to be super slippery um, so it kind of glides through my hands like that. Uh, okay.
I'm going to add more water. I'm going to use that part of my hand, that kind of like fatty part. And it's going to go on the clay at um, about 7 o'clock. So if I look at the top of my clay here, and I think of it as an analog clock, which I know we've all forgotten what they look like, but think back. Um, you want it to go at about 7. So it's not right in the center. It's not right on top. We're not pressing down. We're going to put it at 7 o'clock, and I'm going to push it down and towards 1 o'clock. So my hand is kind of doing this motion. Um, and you'll kind of see as I do it what that will look like. So my hand is here. My fingers are resting um, over the rest of the clay. And I'm just going to press down. My pressure is this way. And you can see that up here, it's starting to get nice and centered, even though down here it's still a bit crazy. So I'm just going to keep going with that. I'm really kind of lifting my fingers so that you can see, but I recommend that you keep your fingers down. Um, you're just going to apply lots of pressure until you get down to that kind of dome shape again. And I can see, I can still see it moving. So if you're getting any kind of mushrooming where it's kind of going over and then you're getting a little bit of a crevice underneath, um, you can take your index finger of your right hand and we'll just use that to smooth it out. So I'm just applying pressure kind of in a straight, applying pressure going this way, um, just kind of smooth that out. You think of your hands as the mold where the clay's gonna go, that's kind of what we're doing. Okay, so now that we've done that, we wanna do it twice more. Um, because you can still kind of feel it, it's not quite quite centered. Um, so we're going to go up again. So we're going to make this shape again with our hands. Thumbs up. And it's going to go on the clay like so. And we're going to squeeze. Until the clay moves up. So the reason I do thumbs up is because there's a tendency when we're squeezing to kind of squeeze with our whole hands. Um, but if we're applying pressure with our thumbs on top, then we're counteracting the pressure that we're applying from the bottom to quite try and make it taller. So you can think of keeping your thumbs up, that's the best way. And as you go, you're gonna get lots of um, clay on your hands, this is called slip. And it uh, is really good for um, sticking on handles. When you're, if you're making a mug, you would use slip. Um, so it's kind of the opposite. It has the opposite properties of what its name suggests. Um, and so it'll make our clay really sticky and kind of difficult to work with as we go on. So if you're getting lots of slip on your hands, you can just wipe it, wipe it off at the edge of your pocket like so, and then we can kind of carry them. Um, otherwise, it'll make it a little difficult later on. So again, I'm going to do that step where I take my thumb and um, clean off the base, and I'm going to go back down. So I'm using this part of my hand. Pressing down, out way. You can see that my pressure is not on top because I'm getting this nice, this nice point here. Um, it's getting a little sticky, so I can add some more water. And again, I'm going to come in with my finger there and just smooth that off. All right, and then we're just going to do it once more, once more up, once more down. So we'll go up, squeezing most of the pressure towards the base, and then we're going to go back down. So as you get well practiced with this, you'll be able to do it kind of all in one fluid motion. Um, I don't really take breaks between the step, between the up and down anymore, um, but that'll just come with practice. And just getting the feel of it. Like I said, it's not that intuitive. It's kind of confusing to the brain sometimes when you're using different muscles that we're not used to using and applying pressure in different places. Um, but once you get used to the spin and where to put the pressure, you'll be golden. Okay, so now that we have this nice centered shape, you can see that it's pretty still. So I clean it off a little. Um, it's not really wobbling all over. Um, 
it's just it's nice incentive. So we can go ahead and start to make the bowl shape. So we're going to take the um, tip of our left thumb. We have long nails. This step is difficult, um, but not impossible. So bear with it. It will feel weird because clay will get all up under there. Um, but we're going to press down on the top of the clay, so right in the centre. So sometimes I like to find a little guide on the top by using just that um, knuckle of my thumb. I like to just press it on top. Um, if your thumb is moving all over like this, that's not going to help. So you want to get your thumb nice and still. So if it needs to take a second, that's fine. And we're just going to create a little, little divot in the top. Let me show you what it looks like. So you can just see I have this little divot. And then the right in the center of that divot is where the center of the clay is. So I'm going to use that as my guide. Um, so there's going to be a few times when I'll tell you to do something as the guide. It's not imperative. Um, it'll just, it'll help us to kind of understand what's going on inside the clay because we can't see you know, our brains are not calculators. Well, I guess they are, but you can't tell exactly where the center is just by looking at it, so it's nice to have that um, little guide there. Okay, so we're gonna take the tip of our thumb, we're gonna press it straight down into the clay. So again, I'm gonna add a little water. I'm gonna take my thumb right on top of that mark, and I'm gonna press it straight down. And it can feel really weird on your fingernail. Um, clay is going to really get under there. My thumbnail's a little long, um, but you can just add a little bit more water. We want to make sure that we don't go all the way through the bottom. What we're creating right now is we're getting down to the base of our bowl. So if um, you think if you think about a bowl, you know that uh, the base is kind of like flat and wide, and then the wall's got like this. So what we're getting right now is the very center of the base. Um, so we don't want to go too deep because we um, will end up with a hole in the bottom. So there are a couple of different ways to measure how deep we've gone. Um, I don't have a needle tool, so you might not either, um, but if you have a needle tool, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to use this trimming tool, which you're going to pretend is a needle tool, um, to show you how to measure the base. So once you've um, drilled a hole, let me see my hole here, um, you, might not be, you might not be too sure how much clay is left underneath. Um, so we can take the needle tool, which, use your imagination, is this. And we're going to press it all the way through the bottom of the clay, so all the way through until it touches the wood. And then you can take your index finger down to where the bottom of your hole is. Um, so, you know, just to demonstrate, if it's I push this through in the center, and I press my, my hole finishes here, and I can pull them out together, and I can see, you know, how much space, so I'm trying to find a spot where you can really see it, how much space is left at the bottom of the clay. Does that make sense? So um, if you drill down and you have this, this much space when you measured, then you want to go a little further. We want to get to about a, a quarter of an inch or a centimeter. Um, so if you went all the way down and you only have this much, then don't really stop. Um, we're a little thin there. Um, so about a quarter of an inch is ideal. Uh, and yeah. Again, that's just a guide. Um, if you don't feel like you need it, that's fine. If you don't have a needle tool, we can get through or on the side of a little thicker. Um, but you can kind of feel where it's at. Okay, so then once we have finished drilling the hole, um, we are going to widen the bowl out. So we want to aim for a pretty flat base and then pretty straight walls right now. So these are the walls and then what's, what we're going to build in the side, inside is the base. Um, so we're going to take our left thumb again, we're going to add a little more water 
And I'm going to put my thumb inside the hole that I just created, and it's at 9 o'clock. So if you can give your analog clock again, um, it's at 9 o'clock, and we're going to press out straight out towards our left knee. So we're going to put our hand on the finger on the inside, and we're going to press the wall out. There's going to be a lot of pressure at the base because that's where the bulk of the clay is. And you can see that my walls start to kind of make this shape. Um, but on the inside, they're pretty stiff straight. So I'll show you what the inside of, of mine looks like. Well, it's kind of crazy in there. It's got some ridges from my thumbnail. It's not exactly perfectly straight. Um, but we can smooth that out in the next step. So don't worry too much about making this step perfect. Um, what you do want to be careful of is not to go wider than the base. So I don't want to press my wall out all the way to the edge of the bat or, or too far over the base. Um, because then what would usually be the wall is kind of becoming the base and we can create a crack in here where the true base is um, during the firing process and that can be kind of a heartbreaker. So we want to take our sponge from our bucket of very clean water. I'm going to squeeze all the water out. We're just going to place it on the bottom of the bowl um, and just kind of smooth out that base. So we're applying just a little bit of pressure. Um, if, you, if you went really deep with your hole, um, be careful not to apply too much pressure. We don't want to um, go any deeper. But what we're aiming to do is just smooth it out. So we're doing a motion that's kind of like this. We're just taking the sponge inside and we're just going to move it in and out like this to try to smooth it out. And also if you use a lot of water in this step, it'll give you a chance to dry it out and see what your base looks like. And we can also smooth off the rest of the piece. Oh, right. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is called pulling, P-U-L-L, pulling. Um, and what we're going to do is take the clay from the base and move it all the way up to the top, and we're going to make the walls nice and tall, and we're going to thin them out a little. So you might be looking at this right now saying, um, this doesn't really look like a ball. It's uh, really chunky looking and not that nice. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to thin all of this out. We're going to smooth it all out, straighten it up. And then after that, we're going to shape the ball. So this is the step where um, I like to tell students if things are going to go awry. It's usually this step. Um, and I don't tell you that to scare you. I tell you that just to make you aware so that we can take this step nice and slowly and patiently. Um, there's no rush to thin out the walls. The slower, the better. So if you feel like you're kind of in a hurry or um, you have a bit of a wobble, I'm going to talk you through a couple of troubleshooting. So just hold on. I'm going to talk you through it, and then, and then we can all try it together. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going, to wet, we're going to wet it really well. So the way that I like to wet for pulling is I like to get my sponge and squeeze some of the water out. And then while I'm spinning the wheel, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of water right on the rim so that it falls evenly over both sides. So that both sides of the wall, because I'm going to be um, – using my fingers on each side of the wall um, so they're both nice and wet and slippery. I'm going to make a pizza with my left hand, like this, like a lobster or a crab. Uh, and it's going to go on my bowl at 5 o'clock. So you can't see it because it's the opposite side of the camera, but I'm going to turn around and kind of show you. Um, and I know what you're saying, do I have to use my left hand? I'm right-handed. I'm right-handed too, and um, this is the way I learned, and it doesn't take much, take long to um, get used to using your left hand, and we're going to use our right hand as well in this. Um, so if you're right-handed and it's feeling a bit like, 
wow, my left hand is being used a lot. Don't worry. Um, this is a two-handed job, even though it feels like a one-handed job. We're going to use our right hand to support our left, um, and it's going to kind of help to prevent any wobbles. So the two main things that will um, create a problem in this step is, one, applying too much pressure. So the tendency, actually, there's three. So first, um, applying too much pressure. So what we're doing is we're going to create our pincers like this, and they're going to go like this. Um, so I will do it close to my body, and you should as well, but just so you can see. And I'm going to move my fingers, and so my thumb is at the base, and my fingers are on the inside of my bowl, um, as low as they can go, so at the bottom of the wall. And I'm going to move everything up nice and slowly, nice and evenly, all the way to the top, um, in one really steady, slow movement. So the tendency to um, pinch too hard is really normal. Um, so on your first pull, just go nice and gentle just to get a feel of it. Um, the second thing that will happen is as we're spinning, um, you can see that since my walls aren't completely straight, actually I'm going to do a quick step here to just to kind of smooth them out. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure on both sides to smooth out my walls a little, help, hopefully help prevent that. Um, okay, so the second thing is to um, overcorrect. So as I'm going up, I'm using my right hand to support my left here. And you can see there's a little bit of a wobble as I go up. But my walls aren't perfect yet. Um, so they're a little like crazy in some places. And the tendency can be to, once I hit that wobble, overcorrect and pinch really hard to try to correct it. So if you hit a wobble, my advice is to just pretend like it doesn't exist. So you want to keep a nice, steady, even pressure, even over that wobble, even if it moves your fingers around. Um, try to avoid that tendency to overcorrect and pitch harder. Um, if you feel like you need to kind of come away from the bowl, just release your grip. That's the better way. So if you hit a wobble and it feels like, wow, that's a crazy wobble, just release your grip and you can kind of come back to it. Um, and then the third thing that would go that um, can go wrong is doing the movement too quickly and creating a spiral. So once you've created a spiral, it's really hard to get out of the spiral. Um, and then that can create thin, thin and thick spots in, in the wall um, and can cause a problem later. So all that said, we're going to go ahead and do some pulls on our wall. So I like to start with my thumb at the base, and I like to give myself a good few spins just to get used to the pressure and to make sure that I'm holding my hand really close, uh, really steady. Um, and again, it's going to be close to you, close to your body. So your thumb is on the outside and um, kind of closer to your right leg and your fingers are on the inside. But I'm just spinning around so you can see. And I'm going to really slowly move up the wall. Now, I have my elbow up because I'm sitting in an awkward position, but if you can do it with your elbow resting on your leg, that's going to be really helpful. Um, I'm going to apply a little bit more water, and I'm going to go again. So again, I'm starting with my thumb all the way at the base, and I'm going to pull the wall up. You can see the kind of ridge that my fingers create. And when I get to the top, I want to be really careful that I don't um, pinch off like this. When I get to the to the rim, I give myself a couple of spins to kind of get steady, and then I just release my grip. So again, I'm up here, and once I get to the rim, I'm just going to slowly release. All right. Now I can hear you all asking, how do I know? When I pulled enough, how do I know if I can go more? Well, um, since I can't see your pieces, uh, let me try to give you some ideas about that. So you can see mine now, it's nice and tall. And if I wiggle the walls a little bit, 
it's pretty wobbly. Um, so I could probably fit in another pull. If I look on the inside, I can see how wide my base is, and then I can look at the outside and see how much clay I think is left on the sides. So I think if I did one more pull and really got a lot of the clay from the bottom, I could probably get a little bit taller. Um, but I'm also really aware that up here it's much thinner. So it's pretty wobbly and pretty thin. And what I want to be careful of is making um, the top too much thinner than the base. So I'm going to go one more time. And I'm going to create a nice little ridge down here for my thumb to go in. But sometimes that can help me pull some of the excess clay from the base. Again, I'm going to wet the walls. I'm going to put my thumb in the base there in that little ridge that I created. And just do one more pretty gentle pull because I want to be too careful not to make my walls too thin um, or it can collapse later when we do the shaping. All right. So now that we've finished pulling the walls, I'm sure not everyone's ball looks like this, but don't worry. Um, we're going to clean off the wheel. And we're going to use our sponge just to smooth off some of the bowl as well. So we're going to take any water that's in the base out. Since we were squeezing water over the top, um, there's probably water in the bottom. And then we're going to really gently rest the sponge on the, on the rim. And this will help... Um, Word is escaping me. Strengthen. <laughs> this will help strengthen the, the rim um, so that when we start to um, shape it, um, it'll be nice and strong and it won't crack. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to shape the bowl. So, we're going to use our rip tool. Um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. So, um, whatever shape, size you have, um, I recommend a wooden or a rubber. Rib, I also have a, oh, I do have a needle tool in here. Oops, sorry, guys. I also have a metal one um, floating around somewhere, but I don't recommend the metal one if you can avoid it for um, this step. If that's all you have, that's all you have, and totally fine, we can do it. The metal one um, is usually for um, finishing, so trimming later on. That's what I use it for, but it's really good for hand building as well. Um, it kind of cuts away a bit more at the clay, so that's why I don't usually use it in this stage. Um, but this is my favorite, this little kidney-shaped guy. Um, and we're going to use the rib, so it should be with the curved side to the right. So if you, yeah, so when you're looking at your bowl, the curved side is going to go at 3 o'clock. Um, and we're going to work on the inside of our bowl for this step. So this will be a little harder because you won't be able to see, and I'm not sure how I can um, model it, but actually let me show you like this. Um, we're going to take the rib, and it's going to go inside the bowl at 3 o'clock, and I'm going to apply pressure there. So I'm going to apply pressure out while the wheel spins. Um, so with this step and with all the steps, we always want to spin the wheel before we start touching the clay. So we want to try to avoid touching the clay without the wheel spinning um, because we don't want to throw off the balance. So I'm going to spin the wheel, I'm going to take my rib and my thumb and forefinger are going to go in the little hole that's there to hold it nice and steady. And I'm going to um, put it inside at 3 o'clock. And I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to apply a lot of pressure. So I don't recommend that you go this fast, but just for illustration's sake, I'm going to apply a bunch of pressure out here and show you what this tool does. Ta -da. Okay. <laughs> so I made my goal really wide. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that you go as wide as I did. You can see here that this wall is really floating out in space. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you what the tool can do. But you want to take it nice and gentle. So you can place it on the inside. You can only shape the rim if you want. And just play with that. Um, 
see what you can do with it. You can just, you can, if you're pretty happy with the shape already, you can just use it for smoothing out um, and kind of, you know, do it as a last final step just to take off any of the ridges that you've created with your fingers. Um, but it's kind of up to you. So the question I get the most is how do I know when I'm finished? Well, it's your bowl. So you're finished when you're happy with it. Um, that being said, if it's starting to get a little wobbly or um, thin in places, then I recommend taking a pause and just um, either letting it firm up and dry a little bit or just holding off for, you know, being happy with where it's at. Um, the more that we play with it, if I was to take my hood now and try to stretch it, sorry if you can hear those dogs. My wheel is outside in my front yard. <laughs> um, if you can, if I was to take my root now and try to stretch it a little further, actually, why don't I show you what would happen? Maybe I wasn't quite happy with the inside shape, or I would wanted to smooth out the rim, and I kind of kept going. You can see that it's about to get a little crazy. Ah! And the other thing to be aware of is that once you go out, it's a bit hard to come back in. So if you um, don't want to go too wide, then I would recommend just going really lightly with the rib. Um, this is going to have to be recycled because it's not stable. Um, so that's it. And then the last thing that we want to do is we're going to take our wire tool which I don't have one, so I improvised. I created this um, tool out of a broken pencil and some dental floss. And we're going to take the wire tool and we just want to run it underneath the bowl. So we're going to pull, hopefully this is off of a break, and pull it all the way through towards us. Um, and then that creates a cut in the base um, so that when it's drying, it doesn't stick to the rib. All right, so that is the ball in one class. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, um, this video is gonna save to our Instagram. Um, no, not our Instagram, our YouTube. Um, so if you have any questions, you can pop them in the comments. Um, you can message us on Instagram. Um, we're gonna keep sharing videos over the coming week and weeks and hopefully that's it um, so that you can join us in drawing at home while we're all kind of stuck here um, and yeah hope to see you there okay bye